Hey. Appropriate? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's episode 77. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. Of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. We analyze them. We now, take them apart. Yeah, we do. We we break them down into their we we were really big on talking about the shape of words. Um analyze the L Y Z E portion of that word. Uh that root. I can't remember if it's Greek or Latin now, but L Y Z E it means to loosen. I didn't know that. That's the thing I remembered. That's really cool. You're analyzing something, you're loosening it up and looking at all the portions of it all the component parts wow that's very cool yeah um you had a house guest how was that great lovely house guests the kind that uh leave the house at 10 a.m and then come back at midnight and tell you what they did and that's all they need from you um so they weren't much around it was actually like i would have liked it they were around more because they were lovely to chat with and they're very cool people doing interesting things um but it was lovely oh that's cool yeah the last time we had house guests i saw them for 20 minutes in the morning and yeah. that was it and and it was fine and then i was like ah, but i'm never really even seeing them and then i found out after they left that the dude because it was my niece who's fantastic her daughter uh, a gentleman they know and his girlfriend or anyway, was a bunch of young people. And I found out after they left that the dude had cleaned my gutters. <laughs> wow. Because of, he, uh, gratitude or OCD. He felt like he was glad that they, we let him stay mm -hmm. and he wanted to do something. And he's very handy. Great. And then he, we he also said we were talking about something that in our house, and he goes, and he and he could tell he goes, oh, you don't know how that works, do you? You don't even know where that is, do you? And I was like, no, we don't. He goes, well, let me show you, so you'll know where this thing in your house is and how it works the way it does. Great, right. yeah. Our we had previous house guests, and. Um... We were, I think we were complaining about our AC or something. And he's like, oh, you probably your filters. And they went and got filters and replaced our filters, which were filthy, by the way. <laughs> they were black. And immediately um, it worked better, right? I mean, I can't tell the difference, but I assume I have stopped uh, hacking up blood. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I don't know if that's related or the stress thing <laughs> that's pretty but, great but, yeah um, house guests are always just a mixed bag but you know i guess when you get older and you don't when there you're a kid and your parents have house guests it's a nightmare oh, well, yeah that just turns your whole world upside down but when you're an adult you get to decide if they're allowed in or not that's huge and then yeah. when they go do stuff, you get to decide if you're going to go do stuff too. Yep. Um, answer is mostly no. Get invited this time. They're just like, all right, we're going to meet our friend for lunch. And then they'd come home at midnight. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we saw a Broadway show and we walked all over, we walked over the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm like, great. Sounds fun. You could have. Like, we just sat here and uh, glared at each other in rage. Like, <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> you know, it, it's if it makes you happy, that's what matters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We love rage. Especially well, me. You're, you you're know in, me. You're in the right country. <laughs> oh, don't. I can't. So let me ask you a question as a guy who writes jokes about the news. So yeah. I I had a gig doing that at one point, and it was fine. It was one of my favorite jobs that I ever had. As far as jobs go, it was a fine job. Yeah. But every now and then, more, more often than you'd like, there'd be something in the news where you're like, okay, here we go. Got to write a joke. 
Got to find a way into this to talk about this because it feels like I should. So what a day like today when you're thinking about going back to work and just to give. And by the way, it doesn't matter when you turn tune in. This will yeah. always be true. So I'll just I'll be generic because it'll always be true. There was uh -huh. just a shooting. <laughs> yes, there was. And uh, and there was, you know, uh, person. Uh, this one was multi layered because the fucking right wing has things they can pretend are the problem. Right. And they already are, of course. Oh yes, they're very into it. Um, As if this was the first shooting ever, because that's the only way that would make sense. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. how how do you how how do you process your headspace for something like this? Well, you don't. We just don't talk about it. Okay. In a case, I feel like now it happens so frequently, and has happened super frequently for years now, that there isn't an expectation from the audience anymore to say something. And I feel like now what has developed at our show and other shows is sort of an unspoken, it's horrifying, but there's an unspoken like minimum number of deaths before you hit the brakes on your show and like issue a serious statement. Sure. Yeah, it's How many? Great. It's it, it's more of a feeling, I think. Yeah, yeah. But um, we have done it several times where I've had to go like, hey, we're not going to start with a monologue tonight. We're, we're going to have some remarks, you know, unfunny. We're not going to do jokes. Um, but so like, you don't try to make jokes? No. Okay. It never would work. Yeah. We're very much, you know, we're not deluding ourselves some shows have deluded themselves in this way, um, but we are not in the news business um, or even the pretend news business. We're in the jokes business, and the, a lot of the jokes are about the news. A lot of them are not. And it doesn't feel like, oh, we got to cover things. Okay. Like, oh, we will choose whatever news we want to talk about and do jokes about. And it's uh, yeah, and today's was like slowly developing through the course of the day. Yeah. And by the time it was taping time, it was like, ugh, horrible tragedy. But the fucking reality is, if you stop the show to issue a serious statement, every time six or seven people are killed in a shooting, it would be once or twice a week. Yeah. And so it really is when every conversation you have in the course of a day is about the horrible shooting that day, then you sort of are like, well, we're going to have to say something. Yeah, you're going to. And never a joke on your show. No, I don't think we've ever done a joke about shootings. Do you think you would? Let's say this shooting uh, qualified. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. I mean, that actually, that would be good. That would be good. That would be funny to talk about sometime. The I remember was, there was another show, I won't say whose, where they had a number. They had a very specific number. Like, if it's more than this many people getting killed, we will start the show with a serious statement. Yeah. Below that number, we'll just forge ahead. Wow. Um, I don't think people are like, oh, there is a shooting today. I can't wait to see what Seth has to say. <laughs> yeah. But just... see, to me, that would be funny to talk about is that weird metric, not the shooting itself, but the, that metric would be like, you know what? So you think you should be leaving that sketch show? That would be a great sketch on that show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, a thing where they're like, how many people were killed? Do we have to talk about it? No. And then there you could write a sketch about that. Yes, that you could do. We are not the place for it. And yeah. I'm, what I find is that audiences are chilled even more easily than you think. 
uh, not just about shootings, but various topics. And they will uh, clam up and not give you anything for the rest of the show if you mishandle a topic like that early. Yeah. Now, what we will do is inevitably Republicans and uh, that ilk will say stupid things about it. Yeah. Then we'll make fun of them. And that's how that's, we talk about the shootings. That's what I was going to say, because you'll probably end up making comments. Stupid. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about the bad reactions to it. Yeah, Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene, not surprisingly, is already like, it's not guns, it's the trans community. Yeah. Which I haven't been following the story at all. Like, is there any evidence that this person was trans or anything? Yes. I don't know. Yes. So right. there's, but, Unfriendly. but of course it's a young person. So um, if you're going to blame anything related to the trans community, it might be the disenfranchisement and not allowing them to be people could lead to violence or it could be guns. Could be guns. <laughs> Seems like it's mostly guns. It might be guns. Yeah. On the percentage of trans shooters. Yeah. Uh, like hundred percent of the shootings involve guns. Yeah, point zero 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 one. So yeah, but yeah, who knows? It won't stop them. Yeah, ninety percent plus are white dudes. Yeah, they can't. They can't be the problem. Yeah, <laughs> they. <laughs> I'm gonna say they like they're not us. Yeah, me, not you and me. No. No. It- I converted. I'm a Jew. So, oh man. So, which I understand we're just white as far as America is concerned. <laughs> but slowly but surely, listen to people, they're making us not, well, not white. It's coming back into vogue to not like Jews. Right. Hey, you're going to uh, come on back? <laughs> Did it get too dicey over there? No, no, no. Yeah, Methodist. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. God, it would be easy to hide. Nobody looks for their cemeteries. All right. <laughs> so here's what I think about the song we picked, by the way. A couple <laughs> things. <I think. laughs> That's a very good segue. Right. Tell uh, them the nice people what the song is. So it's You Can Make Me Free off of Cold Spring Harbor. Oh, uh, yeah. And Cold Spring Harbor's um, Billy Joel's least favorite album. Rightly so. Rightly so, and and largely because of the way his Jack Hole producer, who also stole money from him, um, engineered it. Yeah. He sped and, it up, so he sounds like a weird chipmunk in a lot of the songs. Yeah, it's odd. And I was thinking about these lyrics, and I was thinking about Billy Joel lyrics that we love versus these, which we'll yeah. talk about in a minute. And it occurred to me that, so this is what his freshman album, right? You'd say? This is, I think that's, that's what the disc jockeys say. The disc jockeys, disc jockeys the, would say that. Freshman effort. Yeah. I often call it. And in a lot of these songs, he talks about himself. There's a lot of first person stuff. Yes. And... It was really good, particularly in the beginning of his career, that he went, no, uh, made up stories of other people. Yeah, yeah. that's That'll touch people's hearts. Yeah. And like, so like, if you go Piano Man, obviously he's in the song sort of, but not really. And it's not really even a personal story as much as it is. Here's this guy. Here's this guy. Here's this lady. Yep. And a scene. Basically, I'm setting a scene. Yeah. And some of his best scenes from an Italian restaurant, uh, Vienna, Zanzibar, uh, Ballad of Billy the Kid, a host of them. He's in there somewhere. Yep. But he doesn't immediately go, hey, I'm mopey and sad, which is what this song does. Yeah. And this, uh, for as much as he says me and I in this song, it doesn't seem like him anywhere yeah it doesn't seem like anyone yeah it doesn't it I, my thought about this song is that it's like if you asked chat gpt 
write a love song by someone with a head injury. <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't know that many words and phrases anymore. Yeah. And I don't love the music either, by the way. Or it looks like it was like a love song translated from Russian. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. I don't even like the music that much. In yeah, this not great. It's not awful. He's a talented dude, period. So even a poor shot is going to be have its charms, but not much. The yeah. song doesn't. This is a low point. I like this action shot, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. We're well. putting in uh, well, uh, production values. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying it to prevent the leg cramp. I was, by the way, I was on a sketch show once and uh, uh -huh. was paid paid money to be on the sketch show. Not a good show. And um, the we filmed our own things because they had this bad system. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, we would make these things, and I I stand by the work we did because the sketches we did were quality sketches. But they kept giving these note, and the note was always production values it doesn't have enough production values uh -huh. and i'm convinced no one fucking knows what that means it's very vague God. and we were under the why under the gun and our mutual friend paul goble came up with this dumb sketch and dumb in a good way that uh -huh. was cheap and easy to film and happened to be outdoors in the bright bright sunlight happen oh. to be outdoors right we filmed it for virtually no money to replace something that we'd worked meticulously on yeah sent them this thing that we worked barely at all on <laughs> and they loved it aired it and said we love the production values <laughs> yeah the set for that <laughs> sketch was Wherever there wasn't a crowd and we could film quickly. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. Good. A Good. basketball court. Great. Yeah. So infuriating. The lighting was the sun. Yep. So, yeah, everything was well lit. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, in one of my costumes, because it was a very dumb sketch, was... um Shirtless and pantless. <laughs> and that wasn't even like it needed to be that way. I was like, oh, you know what might also be funny? Why don't I take off my shirt and paints? And we were like, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. <sighs> That's probably not what they mean by production values. That's apparently what these fuckers meant. <laughs> it's weird they were uh, that vague. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, to me, it's like production values means like the fake mustache looks kind of real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny because we had squandered so much money and squat. We spent it well in the sense that we paid people to do their jobs. Sure. But we had spent money on this sketch that was we loved called Action Roommates. It was a funny little sketch. Lots of meticulous editing. It was like a lot of editing. And then they were like, no. And then we like, then we went and filmed this thing outside because we were out of money. And they're like, yes. <laughs> it's a full mystery. Yeah. I mean, you often have non comedy people in charge of these things. They were just like, I just want it to look good. Like, yes, yeah. that's the last thing we care about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, it did. Uh, <laughs> so angry. How many years ago was that? Um, well over fourteen. I'm still mad. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's because you're hanging on to it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're youthful. That's just fascinating. Just the things people think and uh, how wrong everybody is. Ah, anyway. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> The day of all days, Jim. Today, yeah. So I guess I was asking too, because one of the, when I used to work at the little sketch 
of the little joke writing thing, uh, we leaned heavily into you got to write jokes about all the stories. Oh, nope, not us. Yeah. yeah, no, you guys are right. Like plane crashes and we're like, all right, what's our way into the plane crash? There's no way in, baby. Yeah, if we had been around when the world lost Kobe Bryant, we would have been so hated because we would have been sad too, but we were like, but we're going to have to make a joke. I, I hate that philosophy so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you, for me, it's you got to remember what the job is. Yeah. You know, like our guy is on at 1230 at night when people are trying to doze off. Oh, man. Not trying to upset them. Yeah. You know, like chuckle them to sleep a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, maybe be thoughtful, but mostly be funny. Yeah. It'd be funny. And That's for right. God's sake, get Vanessa Bayer out here quick so we can have a fun interview. Yeah. And like do jokes about the news and not self righteous uh, screeds. Yeah. <laughs> but he needs that at that hour. Yep. Save it Just... for the. A block on MSNBC. We'll get back to lyrics in a minute, but I'll tell you a quick comedy story. I did a show last week and I forgot how much I love when the comic before me is not very good. <laughs> now, why would you love that? Because I can back clean up and I look so great. <laughs> and it doesn't feel, you don't feel like it kills the audience. It can. He wasn't that bad. Yeah, okay. And it was, he did something that I find incredible, which is he saw a guy in the audience that he recognized <laughs> and he decided to tell all of us a story that, th that those two guys share, oh, that no. there's no way anybody else could enjoy. <laughs> I'm not convinced the guy he recognized enjoyed it. Oh, my Lord. And the tag of it, which I made fun of because it was just, he's done telling the story, which went nowhere. It's clearly a story he's never told before. You're a, look, you're a funny dude. When you're at a party, if Alex Bays decides he's on, you've got one or two stories that you tell. Sure. And, Probably more, but you've got a couple that you've got on lock where you can tell a true story and you've told them enough that you know where all the beats are. Yeah. No extra stuff. Yep. All the important information. Yeah. And everybody enjoys it. You're witty. You go get your drink. Everybody's like, I enjoyed Alex. And then he did the, you do the thing you like, which is leave or whatever. <laughs> Love and that. everyone's happy with you because you knew that story. This was not that story. This was apparently the first time he ever tried to tell it. Oh, I, such horrifyingly bad instincts. Yeah. The first time you tell a story, you're going to find out whether or not it's even a story. Yeah. Yeah. And you will definitely like afterwards uh, have notes for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't need the whole part about the dog. Yeah. That's a different story, really. I'll leave out the dog next time. Yeah. So he tells the story that was about them going to prom or something. Okay. And, and then he ends it, and I think he thought this was the tag, not remembering that none of us know either one of you. <laughs> he goes, hey, do you still have that Nissan? <laughs> great oh my god that's uh, like, uh, i think you should leave yeah so when i got up there i made fun of the guy before me which was fun but in a friendly way the guy before him i mean who was funny and then i said i go i liked how that last comic really thought you were going to be impressed by the nissan <laughs> i was like oh that guy's got a nissan huh Oh, we must be doing all right. Got a nice little clear the palette. Yes, we all made fun of him. Then did my material. Yeah, it's that moment where you're like, we all saw that, right? Yeah. And I didn't make the mistake that I would have made when I was younger and meaner of going, that last guy sucked, huh? I was friendly about it. Yeah, yeah. 
That's where you get beat up in the parking lot. Yeah, or that guy he turns out to be very nice, and I feel like a dick for years. <laughs> <laughs> I had remember that time I it was at Tequila Mockingbirds, and I decided to do, my act was going to be doing impressions of all the other comics. Oh yes. Oh, I, I, I almost got killed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because back then that would have been Jay Hewlett, who still does stand up, by the way. He's still in the game. Right. I think Fish Karma was there. Fish Karma, that's right. Thing that night. Faith was probably there. Don't recall. I don't think Genesis was there. Do you remember who Faith was, though, right? Faith. Faith was red-haired woman, Irish, I guess. Stage name Faith. Don't know what her real name is. Mm -hmm. I think the only way you would find out her real name is eventually when you encountered her at a 12-step meeting. Because I'm sure that happened. Or I hope. I hope. hope. Faith and hope. Yeah, faith and hope. That, And I would always say some dumb version of introducing her as a comedy team of Faith and Begora. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh they man people hate bucks. yeah god they would pay us way too much how mad is anybody who's still listening that at, at us for god i'm doing what that guy did hey alex do you still have that nissan <laughs> <laughs> oh i can't believe how much this guy cares about the nissan yeah <laughs> uh and but in my defense anybody the lyrics we're about to talk about Oh, yeah, this is better. This is better. But we're going to do it because we made a promise to you. And the one thing we do is we keep our promises. The other thing we do is we analyze Billy Joel lyrics. We analyze Billy lyrics. I don't even like the shape of these. Yeah, bad shape. Um, It's eighth grade poetry. Man, that you nailed it. Because I was trying to think of how to just... That's perfect. Because listen to this. Listen to this off of Cold Spring Harbor. <laughs> you can make me free. You can make me smile. You can make me be like a little child. You can make me be like... You can melt the ice that chills my body. You can dry my every tear. Oh, Lord. Lord, indeed. You can make, doesn't mean anything. It's not, it's. It's just well, uh, things you can do. Yeah, and it is, yeah, you can paint my roof. <laughs> you can uh. <laughs> dry my every tear. You can make the lonely hours disappear. And that even annoys me because, look, you can make me free. You can make me smile. That don't rhyme. You can make me be like a little child. You can melt the ice that chills my body. You can dry my every tear. Why did you suddenly go, oh, one of these should rhyme? I hate that. (laughs) None of them rhyme. All of them rhyme. Right? Generally? Generally? uh, I mean, I don't like to put restrictions on rhyme schemes, but it is messy. Yeah. It's jarring because... I, I, what bothers me more is the lists. None these things don't have anything to do with each other. It's just a list of things you can do. Yeah, and it sounds like it. You know, it sounds like to me it's like somebody giving clues on pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, they okay. They they can make you free. Uh, yeah. they can smile. Uh, they can make so, you be like a little child. For reals, by the way. Perfect fix for this song. Put in one that's very arbitrary. So you've got, you can make me free. You can make me smile. You can rent a car. (laughs) So that at least we're like, huh? Yeah. Well, let me stick around and see what that's about. And every now and then it's like, you can start collecting bow ties. Oh, yeah. Now now it's getting like that, that, uh, that Beatles surreal quality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know my name, look up the number, that weird song. Do you remember that one? Nope. It's so great. Uh, quick side journey. 
You know my name, look at my number is by the Beatles. The only lyrics are, you know my name, look up the number. And it's like 12 minutes long, <laughs> but it changes styles to where they're clearly making fun of the Rolling Stones. And then it becomes a Nielsen version of it. It's really funny and fun to listen to. Wow. At one point, he's clearly being a lounge singer. Paul is. Mm-hmm. And then at one point, he's clearly being an old timey British comedy show where it's all, you know, funny noises and stuff. Oh, great. It's pretty great. Wow. Better than the thing we're talking about now, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, they figured it out. Yeah. This guy didn't. I. I think I'm I think it's one giant verse and then another verse. So I think it's still my turn, I think. Yeah, the way it's written. It. I want no part of this. Go. <laughs> you can dry my every tear. You can make the lonely hours disappear. Needy, needy, needy. Jesus. Yeah. You can make me free. You can make me rise. All right. No. That's something that's interesting at least. Naughty, I guess. I don't know. No. You can make me see, so open up my eyes. How lazy are you? You want her to open your eyes. <laughs> oh. Don't you know my only real moments are the ones I spend with you? How I long to drink some wine again with you. Boo! You! You! One rhyme! Bunch of no rhymes! <laughs> I can take the skies. I can soar like a bird. I don't like those together. Take the skies is something birds don't do. They take to the skies, but they don't take them. I have I have take two in mine. You might well. Have. I'm on the official site, which means yours is probably accurate. <laughs> or maybe my site was like, this can't be right. I gotta fix this. I'll fix it. And listen to this. I can soar like a oh, soar like a bird with his heart full of song. Yeah, yeah. Won't you color my eyes? So it isn't enough that she's got to open these fucking things. Open them. Color them. Hydrate. Hydrate. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you can put. Uh, I've been writing so long. I believe that. Uh-huh. You're tired. Start over. <laughs> I there's nothing it's fairly indefensible of them to say that it's early in your career I get that but lord this is this song you hear this song let's say it's 1971 no one says ah this guy's going to be around for 60 or 70 years <laughs> there's no way and but somehow never known from this um, no I think I hate the most how I long to drink some wine with you again. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's not what you want. No, this is... I don't find anything charming here. <laughs> this uh, is by someone who's never been in love and is trying to imitate what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like I said I think it really is like Chat GPT, but the like beta version before they released it, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, write a love song," and then this popped out, and they're like, "Oh no, back to the drawing board." Yeah, Oof. yeah. This is the version that also, if you talk to it too too long, suddenly becomes anti-Semitic. Like that. <laughs> well, what was that? Not that? So maybe it's it's in here. Was what was that? Was that the Google one or which one did that? Oh, it's like a Twitter chat bot, I think. Yeah. But what was the company that did it? Was it... Um... That I don't know. Oh, it was the Bill Gates. What's his company? <laughs> Microsoft. Microsoft. It was Microsoft. That's what it was. Uh, I forgot. Gates Co.? <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to... I guess I got to read some. Yeah, that's you. It's You know how bad the song is? It's hard to find where you were. It's yeah, the same. Oh, yeah. You can make me free. You can make me cry. You can make it so much better if you would only try. Uh, God. Asking so much of her, and now you're criticizing her. Yeah. 
And if I must wait a lonely lifetime until I am with you, my love, I will wait, but you'll be what I'm dreaming of. Barf. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, you stink. That's it's no good. It's no good. There isn't so what you so a lot of times when we're analyzing the lyrics, we'll say, oh, "What does he intend here?" and it, this could mean that. And sometimes we make funny versions of answers, but mainly because we can, because there's something there. Yeah, there ain't dick here. There's less than dick. There's negative. There's an indent. For yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's less than dick. This is a dick that's got circumcised twice. Yeah, there's a, a moil mistake. <laughs> oh, this is the anti-Semitic part. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Can make me... I can take to the skies. I can soar like a bird with his heart full of song. Won't you cover my eyes? Again, the eyes. Uh, Handle your own eye business. Yeah. Jesus. I've been that, waiting so long. You know, I've always said it. Just, you know you're an adult when you can handle your own eyes. Yeah. I've always said that, and it was one of the reasons people don't enjoy my company at parties, because I won't stop saying that. <laughs> you say it with like a heavy Dutch accent. Yeah, yeah. I, I I put on a lot of affectations at parties. Now, that's not made up, I do, because I find that fun to do. And sometimes you don't have a shirt or pants. Yep. <laughs> not so much anymore, but in the old days. Man, in the old days, I did a lot of weird things at the parties. None of them the weird thing you're imagining. It wasn't anything sexual. It was always just performative nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and great. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes. More, more fun than this song. God, yes. I'm glad I picked it just to just remind ourselves. Because, man, I enjoyed that Billy Joel concert so much. Like, I cried. He was so wonderful. Yeah. Did someone else have to cry your eyes or did you do it yourself? I did it all by myself. I didn't bother the woman I was with. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you help my eyes cry? You can cry my eyes. You can stand in line for a t-shirt. I ho! I can't wait until I have wine with you. <laughs> okay, bro. Oh. So this guy, I can't wait to have wine with you because this guy's put something in your wine. Um. <laughs> Well, don't you aren't you thirsty? <laughs> Pick it up. Uh, it, it it's supposed to be bubbling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna taste it. Gross. <laughs> Backwash, bro. You drink it. Drink it out here by my car. <laughs> Stand by the trunk. <laughs> it's got lean this way. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it. Dud. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you color my eyes? I've been writing yeah. so long. Ugh. Where are we? It doesn't matter. We can just read any section at random. Yeah. Well, I can make it up and Yeah. Yeah, you do can... a list of things like you can make me do. Yeah. <laughs> I can make you sandwiches. You can make me dance. You you can you, you can make, make me reassess. Whether or not my resume represents me well. Oh. <laughs> so that when I send it off, I've got a better shot at at least getting in an interview. This is like, um, if you know how uh, spies will have like code phrases, like, oh, the, the giraffe is in the barn. <laughs> it's like that. It's, it has that level of meaning. Yes. You can make me free. You can make me cry. Ah, Agent Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can make it so much better if you only try Jesus, you desperate son of a bitch. And Sorry. if I must wait a lonely lifetime, nobody said you had to. Yeah, nobody. You're also 22. Relax. Yeah, it ain't that long. 
until I am with you, my love. I, this is the thing. This is somebody calling somebody my love, and it's date two. Yeah, clearly nothing's happened yet because he's awfully desperate. Yeah, and the date they're on is like there. It's a group date. This is like uh, that's the my love you get from like an Uber driver who thinks you're hot. Near corner or far corner, my love. <laughs> Here's good. In fact, I'll just roll out. Two stars. Clean yeah, car. You can only try. God. It's, yeah. I will wait when you'll be what I'm... I will wait when you'll be what I'm dreaming of. You can make me free. You can make me cry. I know that you can make it so much better if you would only try. Oh, my God. Wonderful. It's over. Yes, but e even better. Ready? Yeah. So billyjoel.com uh -huh. has comment sections under uh -huh. each song, which is stupid. But yes. there's mostly not comments. <laughs> On there's myself. one for this song. <laughs> and it's kind of perfect. So if you go to billyjoel.com and look up the lyrics to You Can Make Me Free in the comment section... By the way, I like that you can sort by oldest or newest. How about by onest? Because there's only ever one comment. Sort by onlyest. Onlyest, yes. And this is by someone named Marco Blah Blah. <laughs> so if you're thinking of, if you, if you're thinking of a Marco Blah Blah, it's probably not the one you're thinking of. It's such a common name, but. It's Marco Blah Blah who says it's one of the beautiest songs the world's ever heard. <laughs> wow. And if he had said it's one of the most beautiful songs, he'd be wrong. But one of the beautiest songs, yes, it wow. is. It is if not the beautiest. Yeah, it might it might be the beautiest. It's up there. Is, he might be the Russian spy waiting for the code word. <laughs> That's right. God, that's amazing. I did not expect that gift because I thought, I'll oh, scroll down. There can't be any comments. And here's the thing. Go to billyjoel.com. Go to Vienna. For some reason, no comments. Yeah. Nobody's well, got anything to say about Vienna, but this song, <laughs> Marco one of the beauties. Oh, blah, blah. Russian spy or one of the McKenzie brothers, right? Bob and or Doug. <laughs> <laughs> one of the beauteous, eh? Beauteous. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, all the way. Yeah, terrible. It's a terrible song. This is like, you know, it. I'll bet, you know, Cold Spring Harbor, first album, he's what, 21, 22. Yeah probably wrote a lot of the stuff that year and had this leftover from when he was like 13 and was like, oh, my mom would love it if I put this song on. Dude, that's very, that feels likely. It's not the least likely scenario. Well, now here's what's funny is he's a big fan of the Beatles. And uh, when I'm, is it when I'm 64 or when I'm 54? When I'm 64, right? Do you know when Paul McCartney wrote that? Uh, no. He wrote that when he was around 13 or 14. Oh, great. And uh, John, they were trying to finish an album, and John said, hey, remember that song you used to have? And you... they brought it back, and I polished it up. So that's the difference. That's the one he wrote when he was 13 or 14. Yeah. One of the finest little romantic. You know, it's funny because him and Billy Joel have similar instincts, except that Paul McCartney's not not a mope. Right. He's yeah, like in a good probably. mood. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're both lean cornball. Yeah. But Paul seems like a, a better cornball to hang out with. Yeah, because Paul's not mad at you. No. He's corny, but is 
He's happy. Yeah. I'll hang out with you. <laughs> Lord, that is, I really enjoy how thoroughly terrible this song is. Yeah. It's nice to not, there's, uh, to not be uh, torn. Yeah. It's unequivocally, maybe the worst one, lyrically, maybe the worst song. It, I think it's, honestly, I think it's worse than that French one. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because at least the French one's trying to do something. Yeah. I think when he's asked, like, oh, what are your worst songs? And he lists five of them. This one doesn't even cross his mind. Yeah. It's so bad. It doesn't, his brain won't hang on to it. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's yep. sake, for sure. His brain erased this a long time ago because if it remembered it, he would have quit. <laughs> right. It's like uh, when someone asks you, well, oh, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you? You won't tell them that. Yeah. You tell them the worst thing that happened to you that you didn't block out or suppress. Yeah. You can I, there, I don't know if I should tell this story, but I, there's this funny thing that happened to me when I was a teenager that for me was wonderful. Huh. But it turned out that other participants in the story, and I didn't know this at the time, it wasn't wonderful, and they blocked it from their memory. Wow. So that years later, I said, hey, remember that time? And when they remembered, they went. And it was really funny to me. I was like, oh, so that was a bad memory for you. Oh, okay. Wow. I almost, I have to know what it is. Okay, I'll tell the story, but I won't tell the names of the people involved. Fair. So I'm a teenager and I'm hanging out with a couple other teenagers and we're being teenage idiots. And by teenagers, I want to say that we're like 17 years old. Okay. So young, but sexually mature. Fair. And that's important to the story. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, two of the teenagers are, are girls. And I yeah. want to stress that neither of the girls... If you were to ask them the story today, they still think the story's funny. So they're fine with it. Okay. But these two girls, one of the girls was was there with her boyfriend. And the two girls had this habit of daring each other to do outrageous things. That was a thing they were doing in high school. So one time they went through the Burger King drive through and one of the girls dared the other girl to flash the worker and she was like well you dared me so shows her breasts or whatever and uh they're just being funny and it's a lot of one-upmanship and i'm not involved with this at all i'm just present <laughs> and one of the girls says to the other girl and i will say both girls very attractive says to the other girl who is there with her boyfriend who's playing along and everyone's being funny i dare you to suck Jim's. Wow. Everybody laughs, and I'm not doing anything. And like, well, you dared me. Wow. And proceeds to do a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And I don't object to any of it. I think some people would because the situation, Seems but like you know. I'm not good at boundaries anyway, and I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> and dared. huh? You were not dared. Yeah. I I just I happen listen, I happened to bring my dick along with me. That was a coincidence. <laughs> right. It's mostly with me all the time. I'll be honest, I have it here now. No. Um, yeah, it's no. just always <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh man. 77 episodes in, I find this out. Yeah. Not every episode. Okay. <laughs> I don't always have it with me. <laughs> so this thing happens, and I think to myself, well, that's pretty great. <laughs> and years later, I'm recalling the story because I haven't thought about it in years. And I mentioned it to the gentleman. And I remember I said, remember that time that that thing happened? And he goes, I don't know what, what are you talking about? I goes, yeah, we're at 
did not, and it just the look went. <laughs> <laughs> wow, not ridiculous. I was wondering, like, what kind of story it could be like a good memory for Jim, but super traumatic for other people. And now I know. Yeah. And then if you ask me about this next week, I will have blocked it out. <laughs> Listen, I can't even remember it now, but that's a different issue. That's just really more. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is not a good song. Not a good song. <laughs> the, the point you were making with that story. Yeah. That's a, a pretty good story, though, isn't it? Hell of a story, man. People are weird. People do some weird things. Man. Yeah. Teenagers, man, they're just learning about the world. <laughs> I, but the thing is, that is not the only time something like that's happened to me. That's happened to me a couple, and it doesn't make any sense. No. Because looking at me on the outside, there's no way you'd say to yourself, oh, it's just his thing's got to be amazing. There's no way you think that. No, but you might think, like, this would be a good dare. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Why doesn't the other person go, ah, I guess the Darren game's over? Yeah, that's a weird human. Uh, that's like some behavioral economics at play. We have to do some reading. Yeah, no, yeah. God bless women and God bless their terrible fathers. <laughs> Isn't that how Ted Nugent ends every concert, right? That's right. <laughs> so you see that there, of course. That's a it's a clothes rack. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, it's Sears. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, it could be. That's a good guess. I will tell you that you can't see the top of that sign, which is my fault. Um, it's uh, but it does. I see a percent sign. So yeah. There's a sale, which should make that the discount rack. Yeah. Put in the back in the discount rack. Yeah. Like other can of beans. Perfect. The entertainer. Fast. Dave is going to love this because you were just, you were on it. I never know for sure which side Dave is on. <laughs> he likes it when you guess quicker. Okay. I'm here for he, you, Dave. He had a comment one time, which I enjoyed. He goes, yeah, just sometimes it was, we did do this. My fault in the earlier episodes. If you didn't get it, I'd give you like 19 hints. Oh, yeah. It'd just be this long segment. <laughs> Where I just would giggle and be in, uh, horribly embarrassed. <laughs> and you had not done anything wrong. That's the... No, that's the thing. And when I do horrible things and I do things wrong and I ruin people's lives, not embarrassed. Yeah, exactly. Perfectly content. Yeah, no giggling. Because, and here's the, here's the lesson. It, it's fine as long as it was intentional. Right. Yes. I think that's a legal principle. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. The assault? Yes. 100%. But I, that's what I wanted to do. Just uh, that pleases the court. I meant to hurt him. I accomplished my goal and therefore legal. Like, well, rest he's got us. How about that? I rest your case. <laughs> Ah, uh, who is, according to Billy Joel, Billy Joel's favorite classical composer? Brahms. No. So I want to say, see, if it's this answer, I'll be a little bummed out only because it's such a banal answer. But then I'll be like, ah, Billy Joel. Is it Beethoven? Yeah, it's Beethoven. <laughs> it's Beethoven. It is, isn't it? It's been all, yeah. That's so funny because if you ask me my favorite classical composer, I'm either going to say Mozart or Beethoven because I couldn't remember them. Yeah. Yeah, I would also be a liar. Yeah. And I might even say, uh, I might even say uh, Hiddleston because I'll be saying it wrong. And I'll go, I know, and you, they'll, you'll go, no, you're thinking of the guy who plays Loki. And I'll go, no, no, Hiddleston, I'm pretty sure is a composer. <laughs> but that's the other reason is like when I think of another composer, I'm going to have to say Beethoven because I'll think of four that I'm not sure I can pronounce. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hayden, Hayden, Hayden. 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 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, that's really funny. It's Beethoven. Of course it's Beethoven. It's Beethoven. Because he's uh he's uh Schroeder. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably to his credit, probably half the reason he likes Beethoven and may not even realize it is because child is a 50s rock and roll, roll over Beethoven. It got mentioned in a rock and roll song. That you're right. He was a kid, and that was a That's the first guy you hear about when you're a kid. Oh my God! The dog movies. Yeah. Over the, and then there's the Peanuts. Yeah, you're gonna hear about Beethoven, and he's got the most accessible sort of story too, because he's got the drama of going deaf. Yeah. And hey, by the way, is it Schroeder or Schrader? Um. It be pronounced it, Schroeder, I think. It's Schroeder. I'm pretty sure. I think they call him Schroeder. It's pretty anglicized. Yeah. Is that Has anybody's what would um what would Schroeder's be? Would it be Schroeder's uh little bird? And he you know he puts the bird in a little box on top of his piano, and if he hits a certain key, it kills uh -huh. the bird. If he doesn't hit that key, the bird's okay. So is that Schroeder's box? That's what I'm that's just <laughs> that's uh... <laughs> Schrodinger's, yeah, Schrodinger's, uh, yeah. The bird both exists and does not exist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That was a yeah, weird, I, uh, weird strip that week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you do you remember on Peanuts on, on Peanuts in Peanuts? I guess there used to be a female antagonist in the comic strip. Besides who, Lucy. Besides Lucy, who was, I th I think she was actually red-haired, but she wasn't the red-haired girl, who was sassy and a troublemaker. I vaguely do. Like, real short hair, maybe? Yeah, and people hated her and wrote in and said, you got to get rid of her, take her out of the strip. Wow. And he did, and he sent a letter to somebody, because he would, he would write back to his fans. Yeah. And it was some something very pithy. It was like, well, just so you know, you're the one that killed this little girl. Great. And he had, he did not think he should have a black character in there because he felt weird because he was like, but I'm a white guy and it doesn't feel like, what do I have to say? But right. then a black school teacher wrote to him and how important it was. And he was like, done. Boom. And he said, I'm going to, and what he did is he made a point with Franklin. He said he would never, there would never be a moment when it would be addressed in any way. Yeah. He would just be a kid that was their friend and did funny things just like them. Yep. And it was perfect because of that. Really great. Yeah. I did not realize what I had done when I moved to this part of the country, when I got my house, but I'm near where this guy worked and grew up and everything. Peanuts is a big deal around here. Oh, wow. Okay. Is there like Giant a stadium. Huh? Is there like a museum and stuff you can go to? Yes. And you could go to a museum. And if you go to Giant Stadium just to see a game, you'll see a mini museum. Oh, fun. Because he was a big, big supporter of children's athletics and financing and blah, 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 and hockey. And and so there are uh, a little little exhibit that's all the Peanuts characters in baseball uniforms, you know, and a little tribute to Sparky. You know, you know the name Sparky, right? I don't know Sparky. Okay, Charles Schultz, that was his nickname, was Sparky. Oh. People call him Sparky. And every now and then... Uh, somebody would have referred to Charlie Brown as Sparky, but it was actually his nickname. Oh, well. Wow. And he saw himself in Charlie Brown, definitely. Interesting. I remember years ago seeing an interview with the real-life redheaded girl because she was a real person. Wow. And she was very uncomfortable <laughs> talking about it. She was <laughs> like, you know, I don't know, because he never talked to me. He could have just asked me out, but oh, well. 
Well, he was a weirdo artist. Yep. <laughs> Who eventually uh, served his country, weirdo artist. What? One of my other favorite things, and you know, Alex and Jim talk about Charles M. Schultz. <laughs> yeah, we're segueing right into the next podcast. There is this, uh, there's an art project he did when he was in grade school that got saved. It's a, just a piece of art and not like he was in an art school. He was just at a regular school. And it was, they, their teacher had assigned the thing, which is draw things in groups of threes. So like, you know, three letter openers, three pins, three houses or whatever. And kids did that. And it was fine. His apparently took like a week and a half. And he, the teacher didn't understand why. Turned it in and it's hundreds of things. Because he just went crazy with this little project. And they're all drawn really well. Cool. You know, and it was like, oh, clearly you're going to be a cartoonist or a killer. So hopefully cartoonist. <laughs> Made the right choice, I think. Yeah, the groups of three killer. Not very original. He just killed in groups of three. <laughs> these well, these things always happen in threes. That's right. He was a, got a job as a mater D, which was his, and then he would always just wait for tables of three and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Table of three. Oh, there's four of you. Oh, okay. Oh. Enjoy your dinner. The rest of the night. <laughs> um, have we done? I should pick a song. Is it my turn? It is. My yes. Turn. Have we done this night? No. Let's do that. I um, love it. Has a chorus that is uh, inspired by a Beethoven piece. Which bit of trivia was his favorite composer? Oh, no shit. Isn't that an interesting choice of composers? Huh. I guess I blocked it out. Yeah. <laughs> so weird i thought i was gonna block out the other thing yeah no and the other thing i can't stop thinking about you can't choose what you block out <laughs> yeah beethoven what an interesting choice i've decided yeah <laughs> when i was a kid beethoven was my favorite composer and somebody as an adult should have said all right name a second song <laughs> yeah or a second composer yeah yeah, true. What other compared to who? Uh, Elvis, shut up, you dumb kid. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And then you just would have hated classical music forever. I find it funny every now and then when adults will call out children. I just find that funny. It's great. I think it's mostly good for them. Me too. I remember one time I was watching Johnny Carson with my parents because it, it was on, and Johnny Carson told some joke. And I laughed and my dad, and in retrospect, I think he was just having fun. He goes, tell me why you're laughing. <laughs> That's great. And I couldn't in a million years explain. Yeah. You're just like, oh, Watergate is a funny word. <laughs> I don't know. The rhythm, he has good rhythm and timing. Yeah. If I'd had an amazing explanation, I think I would have got a beating. Yeah. Yeah, you did the right thing. <laughs> oh. Uh, then again, the fact that I didn't have a reason was probably I'd get a beating anyway. Good old dad. It was hard to win. Yeah. 